with so many of us around the world that have a connected passion for these incredible fish, we thought it only appropriate to take some time to look into the genetics and history behind the species. A making of documentary of words and pictures, if you will. Here in the USA, carp are prevalent and live in most bodies of water freely across the country. A few years back, a friend put us in touch with a special company that specifically breeds our beloved species right here in the US. Deep in the south of the country, there are scaly mirrors and strong commons that are growing. They are indeed the future of the sport here in the United States. Literally, American born and bred. You will see some insights into the journey taken from the fish's perspective in this short piece. From fertilization to fully grown specimens, we will take a short look into the process. We thought sharing some of these moments with you may help us more to appreciate the fish that give us so much pleasure and the journey that they take to get into the lakes and ponds for us to catch and then safely release. The fish farm is full of everything carpy and it's a treat for anyone with an interest in the biology of the species. It has a certain aroma with a humid heaviness in the air. On a rain-lashed, windy morning, we met in South Carolina at a non-disclosed location to discuss all things relating to carp. It was an incredible experience, to say the least, and under a veil of cloud and rain, we were lucky enough to see for ourselves some of these future wrecking tackle monsters in miniature finned perfection. Travelling around the farm, visiting the various ponds with company from the dogs and wildlife, we set about finding some of the fry in the grow ponds. Like most things here in the USA, everything in the wild is bigger. That includes the predators that the newborn fish will face. Those predators come in a number of species, from other fish, birds and insects, to humans and otters. Those early years, those are where they are at their most vulnerable. If you look closely when the sounds of the footsteps are heard on the deck and a handful of pellet has been tossed into the lake, you'll see in the distance the entire body of water moving. These fish know it's time to feed. For all of us that marveled into a stream or a pond when we were younger, this is the adult version of the same. Traveling through Savannah to get to the farm was an experience in itself, with the ditches full of lilies and water life everywhere. If there was one place in the USA that should be home to a carp farm, this was it. The younger years are the hardest for them, and they are at their most vulnerable. It is at this time that the fish farmers need to watch them closely, protecting them from harm and predators of all species, watching them around the clock.
Tony Campbell started his career at Sparshall College in England in 1989 and never looked back. Now managing fisheries both here in the USA and in the UK, as well as his own personal lake, his hands are pretty much full. He was kind enough to take some time out to speak with us about his career and ultimately his journey to the United States. The full interview is available in the second American Carpa publication titled The Guilty Ones. Seeing them in all their forms and stages of life, from egg to fry to fully grown specimens, makes you really appreciate the detail in each and every one. The mirrors especially have their own unique fingerprint. Their colors, scale patterns, and personalities develop as they get older, just like the human species. Just like a newborn, they must eat at certain times to maintain a healthy growth rate. I was surprised to hear that alarms are set constantly during a 24-hour period in the first few months for feeding, where the protection and growth rate of the fry is paramount. These baby koi can hear me walking on the deck and they instinctively know they are about to get fed. Like a tornado gathering momentum, they shoal as soon as the pellet hits the water and then eventually break and dissipate. As they grow and mature, the larger fish are separated. The mirrors are separated from the commons, and they are aged based upon the number of summers that they have seen, C1, C2, C3, etc. Some will be flown back to England and Europe, living their lives in lakes and ponds overseas, and some will remain here in the USA, just waiting. From the fry to the fingerling to the mature fish. They are a species that, like no other, have magically put a spell on us. As carp anglers, we see beauty in them all. By becoming a member of the American Carp Society, you are supporting the future of the sport here in the USA and joining an ever-growing movement of anglers that appreciate this incredible sport fish.